Hi, are you dealing with tightness and stiffness in your lower back and you just don't know what to do to get that to loosen up? In this video, I'm gonna give you several actionable strategies that you can do on your own at home to get that lower back and those muscles in there to really uh, release and let go and feel better so that you can get back to doing the things that you wanna do. I'm Dr. Daniel Bridge. I'm a chiropractor in Helena, Montana, and this channel is dedicated to helping you with your health. Okay, like I said, in today's video, we're gonna go over seven strategies that you can use on your own at home in order to loosen up those low back muscles, treat any trigger points, get you feeling better. Now, stick around in this video because the seventh and final one, I'll be very surprised if it's something that you've ever heard of, and I, I also think that you're really gonna like it. So I really wanna know how, what people think about that one. Uh, first, we're gonna start out with some pressure points with some different balls. This is a vibrating massage ball. You do not need one of these. This would be compared more to like a lacrosse ball. A lot of people use a tennis ball. Um, that's a good size and it's kind of squishy so it's not too much pressure. And if you're really sadistic, you can use a golf ball. Not a lot of give here, but very effective. And for my golfers out there, it does not need to be a Pro V1. But let's start with this, something a little bit bigger. Um, you're gonna probably wanna be on a yoga mat um, but you can do it just on the firm surface. Put it in, in the small of your back or right over where you're feeling that tenderness, that trigger point, that knot. And when I'm talking about that, you obviously know where your pain's at. And if you go through and you take your hand and you check different spots in your back, you're gonna find where it hurts. And you're also gonna find little clumps of tissue and muscle where it just feels really tight, like it's not relaxed. And that can be a big pain generator. So get that ball put it right under that spot and then come down onto your elbows. Instantly you're going to feel some pressure right there. It feels really good already. Um, that's, that might be all you do. You might just hold some pressure on there and not move. Right now it feels like there's a massage therapist putting their elbow right in that spot. It feels really good. If I want more pressure, I can slide my elbows forward and lower my back down until I'm all the way on here. If I want even more pressure, then I can start to sit up or I can turn my body and find that perfect spot. Even just moving just like that and twisting my hips, it's, an, it's in an even better spot than it was before. And if you want to, roll back and forth, roll up and down, and you really get that sensation that you're getting a massage. If you're gonna use a golf ball, I don't recommend being on a yoga mat because it's gonna squish down and it's gonna to be too small to really get in your back. Uh, but once again, find that spot, Put it right under there. For a golf ball, you are gonna to wanna to lift up your knees and bend forward so that you can flatten your back right into that ball. And same thing, you can either do a pressure hold right on those trigger points or you can slide and roll around back and forth so that you get that massaging motion on those trigger points. Next strategy that you're gonna to wanna to use involves a foam roller. Now, if you don't have a foam roller, you can substitute something like a a, a water bottle, even a rolling pin. Um, those are gonna be a little bit harder and not as big. So this is gonna be better for someone who has a lot of pain, very sensitive, very tender. Maybe uh, putting a golf ball into that sounds like the worst thing in the world. This is gonna distribute the weight of your back a lot more, but you can also get more specific with it as you want to. So kind of similar to, the, to what we just showed you. You're gonna get the foam roller. You're gonna put it right here in the small of your back and you can do one of two things. One is you can start to lean back into it. This feels really good as well. I'm getting a nice broad, almost a stretch and a massage pressure holder right in the small of my back. Um, but as you, as you move around and you roll on it, um, you're gonna spread that pressure out and almost like you're rolling out some dough, you're gonna roll out those muscles in your back. And I felt a little bit of movement in my back. That felt really good but you just go back and forth, working and kneading those muscles, getting those knots out. Now, as I mentioned, if you want a little bit more pressure, instead of putting that all across your whole back, you can slide it off to one side and you can even turn your back so that you're just getting the corner of the foam roller. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna put that just on the right side and yep, it's a lot more pressure than if I had it spread across my whole back. And as I press down here and turn away, I can really get that corner into a specific spot if you're wanting extra pressure 
in a specific area. Okay, now we're gonna talk about cross fiber massage. The muscles in your back that we're targeting, your erector spinae muscles, go from top to bottom. They're vertical. A cross fiber massage is where you actually, you don't massage them the same direction they're running, you go crossways. So like when you're cutting a tri-tip steak or turkey, you wanna go against the grain. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So once again, these muscles go from, from here all the way up your back and using your hands, gently just press around until you come to a sore spot. Uh, take two fingers and press them into your back and then take the other two pointer and middle finger on your other hand and lightly press in here. You can picture it like they're guitar strings and you're strumming lightly back and forth. With that analogy, we're looking for some nice calming classical music, not heavy metal, so just uh, less is more. You wanna find the spot where you say, oh, that feels good. Not necessarily, ouch, what was I thinking? So just work back and forth and then go up a little bit, find another spot and work back and forth. This is a technique that can be used anywhere in the, on the body and the lower back is no exception. Next is the pin and stretch method. And it's almost like an opposite of the cross fiber massage. So remember, those muscles that go up and down your back, they're straight up and down. Um, in order to lengthen them, we bend forward, that stretches them out over the back, and then to shorten them, we contract them, we straighten up our spine. So for this uh, specific strategy, you want to straighten up your spine and then take your thumbs and work up until you find that knot or that tight muscle. You can do both sides at once or you can just focus on one side. I'm gonna do both. I'm leaning backwards and I'm pressing my thumbs in and down against those muscles. And then I slowly bend forward. Then I find another spot, lean backwards, press in and down, lock that muscle down. And as I bend forward, that muscle slides under my thumbs and it feels really, really good. If your muscles are tight, you can kind of picture it like you're pulling taffy, stretching it out, getting them thinner and looser and um, stretched out. So these hands, they're not just for high fives, they're for pin and stretch, they're for cross fiber massage. These are the stars of the show. This next strategy is a little out there, I will admit, but people swear by it and people have had a lot of success with it. It's tapping or percussive massage. So you take your fingertips, if this is your back, you just go around and you find those sensitive spots and you just tap on it. So I'm gonna demonstrate going through and I'm tapping. It feels good, it's light, but so much of uh, lower back pain, uh, tightness in muscles is, ne is neurological. And you are sending signals to the muscles, to the spinal cord, to the brain, when you tap on a certain area, and you can really bring your, uh, your brain's awareness to that area to start focusing on it and start allowing those muscles to relax, to stretch out, and to heal. Now we're gonna talk about pressure point release. This can be done really well in a chair, but you don't need to have a chair. I'm gonna demonstrate it without a chair. Um, taking my thumbs, I'm going to work up the muscles till I find the spot where it is sore, and I'm leaned forward as I do this. Now, this feels kind of tender here. I'm taking my thumbs and I'm pressing them forward while I'm leaning my back backwards. And then I just hold. Hold on the spot, that's all you do. Nice and light pressure, increase as you can handle it. And be sure to breathe, um, make sure you're not taking shallow breaths and just hold it and just stay nice and relaxed and then release, lean forward, find a different spot, get those thumbs in there, lock them in, press them forward and lean backwards and just hold those pressure points. The sustained pressure on those trigger points or those tight muscles will start those muscles to melt and to relax and to feel way better. Okay, lastly, number seven. This is the one I told you that I'm guessing you've probably never heard of. I will be very impressed if you had. This is called skin rolling. Uh, we've got our muscles and they're wrapped in a fibrous tissue called our fascia. And then we have our skin. 
And between those three muscle uh, uh, fascia skin, you can get adhesions, restrictions, where they're not moving and gliding like they're supposed to. So by rolling your skin in a certain pattern, you can actually break up those adhesions, you can loosen that fascia and get certain areas, such as your low back, to function better. Let me show you what it looks like. <clears throat> my shirt doesn't want to stay up, so I've had to do a few takes, so my skin might be a little red, but uh, grab your thumbs and your uh, pointer fingers on each hand and go to the bottom, right at your lower back, and grab some skin. Grab some skin, pull it out, and then work it up. Roll it up. If you get to a particularly tight spot, grab the skin and pull it out away from you and move it all around in all directions. As I'm moving through here, I can feel my skin start to get warm. I can feel the blood coming to the area and it actually feels really good. Go up as high as you want and then move over to the other side. Once again, grab a chunk of skin and just start rolling it up. Stop when you need to. Go clockwise, counterclockwise, and work all the way to the top. Um, hopefully these techniques, one of these techniques will be helpful for you. I know what it can be like when your lower back is tight and stiff and uh, you don't know what to do, how to make it feel better. So give these a shot, uh, leave a comment, let me know which one was most effective for you and then don't forget to share uh, this video with anybody who might be dealing with something similar. See ya.